There was a time when the internet felt humane. I don't know if it was the World Wide Web's ever-changing nature that got us here, or just my growing up, but somewhere along the way, the web's messy hysteria disappeared, and it was replaced with a shared but very calculated consciousness. Back in the day, as we discovered our new, connected lives, anything felt possible. It's the nature of things that, as they get defined, they lose some of their sublime power. In the internet's case, it has so often been the epicenter of humanity's worst traits that it became usual and positive for us to detach ourselves from it. What was once a blurry realm of infinite possibilities progressively became a very clear set of limitations. It's a human tool littered with prejudice, hatred, harassment, and just plain abuse. Engaging with the human part of it means being exposed to its worst aspects, and thus came the rules. Don't read the comments, do not discuss anything remotely touchy, don't go against the general opinion, do not engage with anybody you don't know in real life, etc. And obviously we don't follow any of these constructs. But every time things get messy, every time the internet gets hurtful, we go back to the mantra. We will not invest ourselves that much ever again. We get detached from it. So it's our own little stoicism, something we often fall back on when things get too emotionally draining. Relationships are an obvious instance of this. After a few, we tend to get disenchanted, afraid to invest ourselves enough to be completely heartbroken again. You start to get numb, seeing your past self as naive. He or she was obviously not made for me. And you're prone to disappointment. Never again, we say after a particularly painful breakup. Better to stop than to live through that again. There is value in naivete, though. The expression has developed such a negative connotation that we often forget the importance of, and the great things lived during, our immature experiences. And Sybil reminded me of that. Developed by Star Made Games and directed by Nina Freeman, Sybil is an incredibly personal game. It tells the seemingly true story of Freeman's life, and as such, it can get easy to equate your appreciation of the game as an appreciation of her character. This would be misguided, though. The mental exercise of trying to differentiate what really happened to Freeman from the fiction itself quickly becomes meaningless. This is something that'll be insufferable for some, and thoroughly relatable for others, as it should be. But in this case, there's definitely something daring about exposing yourself out there, especially in a medium often so unappreciative of this kind of introspection. It can and does get uncomfortable. The game will have you sift through photos, mostly selfies, some failed, some better, and very personal notes of Freeman's. In what feels like a very earnest process, she exposes a lot of her young self in the game. And while it would be easy to detach ourselves, looking at her with a distance, her self-examination serves as a leverage for the player's own thought process. There is something instantly recognizable in an insecure teenager hoping to get some kind of attention and struggling with her own emotions. This representation is extremely potent here, as it seems like, and it might be, completely real. The story follows Freeman falling in love with a boy she met playing an MMORPG named Valtimeri. In the short time it takes to play through Sybil, you'll alternate between navigating your desktop, looking through photos, messages, and texts, etc., and playing said online game. As it stands, the player doesn't have much input in how things play out. The biggest choice you'll have is whether or not you answer your messages. Funnily enough, the MMO part of Sybil involves clicking on enemies until they die, like most games in the genre. It's bound to be an experience that gets attacked for being not a game. Well, it's actually making a point of using the medium itself to connect with people, something that short-sighted detractors won't even be bothered to consider. But of course we are detached from that kind of internet criticism, are we not? Aesthetically, Sybil is akin to a teenager scrapbook. It meshes a handful of different aesthetic concepts with no thought or care other than what is probably the main character's appreciation. Expect loads of pink. While the disparate looks don't feel exactly coherent at first, it goes from a pseudo-pointillism in the Valtimeri game to full motion video in cutscenes. It is certainly used with intent. These jarring differences sometimes overlap each other. For example, you'll get notifications from your computer while in the online game, and they're emblematic of the character's multiple sensibilities, echoing the very different lives we lead on the internet and outside of it. The amateurish quality of the filmed cutscenes will certainly be a sticking point for many. While the voice acting is more than competent, the same can't really be said for the on-screen acting. Freeman manages well enough, but her co-actor is unnatural and uncomfortable in front of a camera. Then again, it's the kind of acting you would expect from college actors filming a video made for class, and in Sybil's incongruous melange of aesthetics, it simply fits. A flaw can be used in a positive manner, and it's very much the case here. The aesthetic of Sybil can be messy, but it's never hesitant. The two teenagers, characterized through flaws and false hopes, don't become negative figures themselves. One can be sexist and the other one naive, but neither is at fault. Freeman doesn't look at them, or herself, with disdain, and writes their mistakes as part of the act of maturing. 
As much as she's willing to expose herself and her past in the game, her willingness to show failures on their face instead of shying away from them emphasizes Sybil's themes of maturation, a game that's geared towards the future by engaging with the past. Because in detaching ourselves, we often forget to face our own mistakes. By closing ourselves off to others, we're afraid of being hurt. We leave ourselves at the mercy of inertia, carried through life as it comes. There's a value in mistakes because they shape us. There's value in flaws because they're a part of us. Self-examination helps us better understand ourselves, and thus helps us be better people going forward. Sybil is that act shared with others, to be used as Freeman's memoir and act as a mirror. Sybil is about maturing, and Sybil is progress. Thank you all so much for listening. Let us know if you enjoyed the piece. Please share it with someone else if you think they would enjoy it. That kind of exposure is really, really important for us. So thank you all again, and keep talking about games. They're the best. Bye.